All right, so I decided to do a last minute recording, just recording an example inequality. This is one of the types of inequalities that has really been giving us trouble. So um, I wanted to go ahead and make a quick recording of just this one problem. It's not the whole class. This is like the worksheet that we're doing number one on the worksheet. Uh, topic 1-5, the additional practice worksheet number one. So when I'm solving, again, first of all, step one is do the distributive property. Well, there's no parentheses, so I don't have the distributive property. So I completely ignore step one or I skip step one. There's no parentheses, can't be a distributive property. When I get to step two, this is what step two means. Step two is saying, look at each side separately. So I have a left and a right side. That's what this line tells me. When I drew this little line right here, it separated the equation into a left and a right side. In step two, I'm looking at those sides individually, separate from each other. Hold on. So I'm going to act like this right side doesn't even exist right now. And I'm just going to look at the left side. So I look at the left side. Is there anything I can combine on the left side? I think to myself, well, no, I've got a term with a variable and a term without a variable. I can't combine those. I can't combine a bunch of T's, technically negative T's, and then a bunch of numbers. Can't do it. Not possible. All right. So in that case, I'm done on the left side. Well, now I'm going to kind of do the same process with the right side. I'm going to act like this side doesn't exist. All right, well, let's act, side, act like the left side doesn't exist. What can I do on the right side? Do I have any like terms I can combine? Well, here's a hint. If you have more than two terms on the right side or on the left side, which we only had two on the left side, if you have more than two terms, you can combine something. You have to. It's physically impossible to not be able to combine them if you have more than two terms, if you only have one variable. Because you're either going to have to have two numbers or you're going to have to have two terms with variables. Well, in this case, we have two terms with variables. We have a negative 3t and a negative t. Well, those are like terms. It's three negative t's and then another negative t. We can combine those. Now the math is kind of throwing some of us off still. This is the equivalent of saying, I'm going to do this two ways. I have three negative t's, and then over here I have one negative t. I want to add those all together. How many do I have? Well, I have negative 4t. That's one way to do that concept. Here's another way. And again, I'm just focusing on the right side, pretending like the left side doesn't even exist right now. Think of negatives as being in debt. So if I am in debt, $3, I owe $3. So I'm negative, I'm going to change the variable. To, or actually, I'm not even going to change. I'm going to say negative $3. So I owe my parents $3, we'll say. And I go to my parents, and they say, hey, you were bad this week. We're going to take another dollar away from you. We're, well, I don't have a dollar to give them. So if I already owed them three dollars and they're taking another dollar away, now I basically am going to add another dollar onto my debt, which is another negative, and now I owe them negative four dollars. So negatives are like debt. The more negatives you have, the more in debt you go, the higher the debt. So hopefully that helps a little bit with the math because we're struggling still to do the positive and negative numbers and you got to be able to do that to solve equations. So if I combine these numbers, I get negative 4t and then I still have the subtract 23. I didn't do anything with that number. So now I can't do anything on the right. I already knew I couldn't do anything on the left. So now I can start thinking about both sides together. The sign hasn't changed or anything. All right. Well, if I can't do anything on either side individually, this is when I need to now start trying to get all the variables to one side and all the numbers to one side. This is step three on the sheet. Step three will always look exactly like this. Different numbers in, in math, but 
it'll have one term with a variable and one number on the left. One term with a variable, one number on the right. Step three will always look like that. Never look different. So I need to get all the variables to one side. Well, in our class, in that worksheet, or the steps sheet, it tells us to move all the variables to the left. Well, if I need to get this over to the left, I told you earlier in class, we're never going to multiply or divide in the middle of an equation. So that tells me I either got to add or subtract to get it over to the left. Well, I need to do the opposite. Remember, solving equations is about doing opposite math. So the opposite of negative 4t is positive 4t. Well, if I'm doing that there, I need to come over here and do the same thing, positive 4t. That's why I draw the line, is to make sure I do it on both sides of the line. One on the right side, one on the left side, or one on the left side, one on the right side, depending on which side I'm starting with. Well, that goes away, which is the whole reason I did it. This, again, going back to combining positive and negative numbers, if I'm in debt, if I owe my parents $9, like kind of like the example I used before, and then somehow I earn $4, well, I give them the $4, and now I'm only in debt $5. So I would be negative 5t now. Still have the subtract 7. My sign has it changed, still the same sign as I started with, but now I have negative 23 is all on the right. Now I just have a two-step equation. Should know how to do a two-step equation. I need to get the t by itself, or basically I need to get all the numbers over to the right. I need to get rid of them on the left and move them over to the right. So again, I don't multiply or divide in the middle of the equation. So I would add 7. Oh, I don't need that yet. Add 7 to get rid of it. Well, that means I add 7 over here. That gives me negative 16. I still have the negative 5t because that all went away. The 7s both went away. Again, sign is still the same. Hasn't changed. My last step in equation is when I finally do something besides adding and subtracting. I need to divide. Last step is division. I need to make sure I include this negative sign that I keep bringing down. You got to make sure you keep bringing that negative sign down. And I divide by the, the negative as well. I don't ever lose that negative sign. So if I divide by a negative 5 there, I've got to divide by a negative 5 there. This is when the sign changes. Now, because I divided by a negative as my last step, I need to flip the sign and I need to say T is greater than, and then all you can really do with that is just say it's, well, it actually becomes a positive number because I have negative 16 divided by negative five. So T is greater than 16 fifths. Uh, I see there's a, somebody, I don't know if you're saying you'll be right back or what, but I'll check that in a second. So now when I go to graph this, I create a number line. I don't even put any numbers on it right now. You'll normally be given the number line on quizzes and stuff, even on the state and district tests. Normally they'll give you the number line, so you shouldn't have to ever really create one. That's why I'm not super worried about it. I put my number right in the middle of it. So 16 fit, and I put a circle there. It's my first step. 16 fifths, if you wanted to convert it, is about 3.2. Well, it is 3.2. We take 16 and we divide it by 5, and that gives us 3.2. So you need to know how to do that. And that'll actually be on your next test because we have that estimating irrational numbers. One of the questions is going to have to do with comparing an irrational number to a decimal or a fraction. So I need to know, do I fill that circle in? Well, the only time I ever fill it in is if I have the little equal sign underneath my, my inequality symbol, and I don't have that here. So in this case, 
16 fifths is not a solution because basically I'd be saying 16 fifths, I'd plug it in for the T and I would think, well, is 16 fifths greater than 16 fifths? Well, no, it's not greater than 16 fifths. So that's false. So that means this number is not a solution. That is not a solution, so I don't fill the circle in. Or again, the cheat sheet version was you only fill the circle in when you have the little line underneath the inequality sign. If you don't have that, then you don't fill the circle. So the last thing I need to do then is I need to say, OK, well, I need to shade it in. My shading comes from testing out a number. I always test out a really high number, so I use 100. And I say, well, let me plug in 100 for T. So instead of plugging in the 16 fifths, I'm going to take T and I say, OK, well, what if T was 100? Is that greater than 16 fifths? Well, yeah, that's much greater than 16 fifths. So that means I go to the right because 100 is a solution. So I need to go to the right. So that's my answer. 16 fifths was the number I came up with. I had to flip the sign. When I graphed it, I put an open circle on the 16 fifths number I came up with. I didn't fill it in because 16 fifths itself is not part of the solution set because there's no little equal sign underneath like this. There's that's not there. If that's not there, then I don't fill the circle in. And then when I shaded it, I wanted all of the numbers greater than 16 fifths, which means I want all the numbers to the right. The numbers going right are greater than 16 fifths. The numbers going to the left would be less than 16 fifths. So that's an example. Like I said, that's pretty similar to number one. Go ahead, start working on the worksheet. I'll be asking you questions about it during class. Hopefully I'll get to everybody. You do need to still turn it in. Um, just do by the end of the day though. Submit it in focus, upload it into focus. Do not email it to me in canvas, please. Upload it into focus. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. So that'll be available if you want to go back and. Watch that if you need help tonight. I might go ahead and.